This episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Imagine taking a peek into the future on the sad day that the last Olympian takes to the podium. He humbly bows his head as the very last gold medal is hung around his neck, and then he waves to the crowd who whoop and cheer and shed tears and wet themselves in acknowledgement of this historic moment, which signifies the end of a golden era of the Olympics. Why? They weighing themselves. The last Olympian then exits the stage, but not before giving a cheeky bite into the last solid gold medal for the flock of photographers. We don't have to peek into the future, though. This is the scene from the 1912 Summer Olympics in Stockholm, Sweden. And everything since then has been a proper bloody scam. And how is what we're going to get into? Welcome back to another episode of Business Blaze. What happens here, if you're wondering, is... This script that I am reading from has been written by our fine scriptwriter, Danny. I'm going to read it, if that wasn't obvious. And then Sam, our glorious video editor slash memologist, memologist, is going to just add in some of the finest memes that you've ever seen. That's what we do here. Welcome. Let's get going. Triumphant athletes have probably been biting into their Olympic gold medals for decades, but it's a trend which only developed into something of an expected tradition in relatively recent years. You're standing there on the podium celebrating your most glorious career-defining moments in front of an audience of about 3 billion viewers. 3 billion viewers? Yeah, right. I know approximately zero people who actually watch the Olympics. I think people say they watch the Olympics. They're like, yeah, 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 I tune in and I watch Discus. It's like, that's not watching the Olympics. I watched zero minutes of the Olympics. I heard a podcast where people were talking about people streaming the Olympics and having a problem with that. And that was the closest I got to the Olympics. And f***ing proud. I mean, it's just a giant waste of money. But no, that's not what you're going to do. You're going to sink your teeth into that sh and chew it like it's a Krispy Kreme caramel ice ring donut. And now I'm hungry, Danny. Thank you. I imagine that plenty of competitors in the confusingly named Tokyo 2020 Summer Olympics were snapped taking a nibble into their medals. I have to rely on imagination as I couldn't get a clear reception on my TV down in the basement, so I missed it all. Ah, oh, yes. Sorry about that, Danny. La puta que me parió! La puta que me parió! Dale, boludo! Dale, pendejo pelotudo! The only clues I could gather as to what was going on over the last 17 days was Simon's constant background whooping of SPORT! 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 But you have to wonder why the athletes are biting their gold medals in the first place. Back in the days of the California Gold Rush, you used to bite into gold to check whether it was the real thing or a lousy, cheap fake. Genuine gold is softer and more malleable than other metals, so a bite should leave a reassuring little indentation. In contrast, fake gold is more likely to leave you with a broken tooth. Yeah, so you'd think that they'd have come up with a better system, really. Also, if you're an Olympian and you've got a gold medal, you'd be like, I don't need to check you're the Olympics. What are you going to do? Scam me out of a gold medal? Turns out, yes, that's what this bloody video is about, isn't it? But the Olympic tradition is a little weird as it appears to be publicly casting doubt on the integrity of the Olympic organizers. Are you giving me the real deal here, buddy? Or are you trying to par me off with that chocolate coin sh**? And the athletes have every right to have doubts because ever since that last gold so solid gold medal was handed out in 1912, an Olympic gold medal is typically made up of about 99% silver. And I didn't realize this until relatively late in life that you know you're always like, yeah, gold, silver, bronze, and then isn't platinum just a little bit more expensive than gold? I was like, silver's got to be like worth, you know, not, not tiny amounts of money, right? It's like, no, gold is like way more expensive than silver, like way, way more. Crazy. So yeah, you're getting ripped off, aren't you? Which might explain why German loser David Moller broke his tooth when jumping down on the medal during the 2020, uh, 2010 Winter Olympics and had to make an emergency visit to a dentist after the presentation ceremony. What an idiot! Oh, what a loser! Except that he was actually biting into a silver model, medal, the silly sausage, so I think he had it coming. Oh wait, he actually won a silver medal, so it was like 100% silver or whatever. Well, whatever. <laughs> It's odd to think that although the Olympic Games boast a history stretching back thousands of years to ancient Greece, there were only actually three Olympic Games throughout that long history which dished out the solid gold medals that everyone appears to be breaking their backs to win. And we've reached a point in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics where gold medals are just made up of recycled bits of knackered old cell phones. I actually believe that. There are precious metals in cell phones which they probably use to make that that's crazy. It's true. I'm sure Greta Thunberg would approve, but she's not the one who spent a lifetime putting her heart and soul into the dream of winning glittering gold for weightlifting or beach volleyball. How do you know, Danny? Maybe she has been. She has a private life. She's not just an environmentalist. Maybe she's also practicing to be in the Olympics. Danny, please, you know, don't underestimate people. We've talked about this. 
How dare you? So when did the Olympics become so tight fisted? I don't know, probably after they built like seven stadiums that were just left to sh after the Olympics and just turned into like, you know, just dumps, just abandoned Olympic villages and stadiums. And that's why I say it's a waste of money, folks, because it is. It has to be said that the Olympic gold medals have absolutely nothing to do with the history of the ancient history of the Olympics. The earliest reliable date for the hosting of Olympic Games in the sanctuary of Zeus in Olympia, Greece is 776 BC. Though most historians agree that the true history is likely to stretch back way further. There was no place on the podium for second or third place or losers as they were effectively called back then. Ah, yes, losers. Like, number of Olympic gold medalists. I'm not gonna say me, because I can name, like, the swimming dude. Michael Phelps? Matthew Phelps? Phelps. Let's just go with Mr. Phelps. He won like a lot of gold medals. Other Olympic gold medal winners I can name? Zero. But I'm sure like regular people who enjoy sporting activities can name some. Number of silver and bronze? It's like none. It's like none. Because you're lost. <laughs> Oh, what a loser! Look, and I know, it's true for YouTube as well. I'm not kidding myself. Number of balls and bearded YouTubers people can name. Look, I know Vsauce is gold. I know Babish is silver. I'm like way down into this. Probably even someone else in bronze, isn't there? Sh I'm like, I'm a big time loser. Only the winner would be celebrated, and he would receive a wreath of olive leaves taken from a tree near the Temple of Zeus and twisted into the shape of a crown. Anyone who came in second or third place was swiftly executed. Nah, I just made that last bit up. They weren't executed. But one thing you should execute upon is subscribing to today's glorious sponsor, HelloFresh. Did you like that transition? Yeah, you did! Do you ever find yourself in a recipe rut? What's a recipe rut, Simon? Well, that's when you're making the same meals over and over again. Yeah, that is basically my life. Well, HelloFresh is going to snap you out of that. They're going to be like, look, we sent you something that you're going to cook. You might like it, you might not. You probably will. I mean, unless you order something like, I don't really like salmon very much, but if I ordered salmon, that's not true. I, I kind of always said I didn't like salmon. Then I had a kid and my wife is always making like little salmon in the oven for them. And I'm always like, yeah, I'll snack on that and it's pretty tasty. I think I've changed my mind on salmon. I like it. But look, order foods you like. This isn't, what are you doing, Simon? I was talking to my ad guy the other day. He's like, bro, why did you make the ad read so long? You're just getting the sponsors used to it. And I was like, I'm sorry, but I just can't keep on topic. I have like maximum level ADD. ADHD? Is it, impo is it politically correct to say ADD? I'm not even sure. I feel like that's one of those things that people are like, oh, 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 ADD, that's not right. That's ADHD. <laughs> you say they're not hyperactive. What are you talking about? Oh my god. Uh, so hello, hello fresh. They send you fresh food. It comes in like a box. It's got all this cooling stuff. It's brilliant. And you're like, that sounds extremely bad for the environment. Greta's going to be upset. It's all recycled and recyclable. Or like 90% or something like that. There was a little asterisk, which I'm sure they'll be like, say exactly for legal reasons, but I forgot to put it on my notes. So I'm sure it's not as bad for the environment as you think, is basically what I'm trying to say. HelloFresh send you the food to your door, you make it up, it's delicious, uh, you cook it up yourself obviously. I mean, unless you've got a personal chef, in which case, I mean, good on you. Oh, <laughs> uh, what do I actually have to say? There are points that I have to talk about rather than just ramble for a few minutes, otherwise they'd, they'd be like, Sam, we're not paying for your rambling, are we? You got, you got points to hit facts, boy. They have five star meal choices, which is a weird choice because whenever I like five star food, don't you mean three star? Because like, you know, isn't, it just goes up, like on that Michelin thing, it's like up to three stars, right? But, 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 get back to the points. But it's delicious. Local sourced, uh, local farmers send you delicious locally sourced meals that we skip the meal prep and put dinner on the table in 30 minutes or less, which is brilliant, that's very quick. The HelloFresh is a fun, easy experience. If you've never tried a meal kit, you're missing it. I mean, although who hasn't these days? It's like 2021. It's been around for a very long time. Just give it a try. It's also free. What's that? No, no. 14 free meals by using the code 14 blaze. That's sick. I mean, not in a bad way. Like, not in like, that's disgust, like vomit way. But in the way the kids say it, like, that's sick. I mean, they don't say it anymore. Now they say other words. Sick was when I was a kid. Anyway, look, code 14 blaze, link below. Let's get back to it. The writing was on the wall for the games after the Roman Empire conquered Greece in the mid second century BC, and they were eventually abolished around 393 AD after the Christian emperor Theodosius dismissed them as a pagan abomination run by nutty Zeus worshippers. How to cancel things in the past. That disgusting 
Olympian shit. Get it out of my life. Around 1,500 years later, the first modern Olympic Games were held in Athens in 1896 when paganism made a comeback. Not really. Uh, there was still no gold on the podium, though. Instead, winners received a silver medal, which was more desirable at the time, while second place was acknowledged for the first time with a bronze medal. Uh, the subsequent 1900 Paris Olympics. And that was the beginning of uh, last place medals or participation trophies. That's what they're called. You know, it's like, every kid's a winner. And I'm like, yeah, but what about the kids who lost? What about the loser kids? Like, I've got a kid now. I don't want them getting some participation trophy or some shit like that. Because it's like, look, look, life is hard. You gotta know if you're good enough to, you know, cut it. Otherwise, you know, you may as well just give up. And it's good to know early whether you should give up. That's depressing. <laughs> The subsequent 1900 Paris Olympics dished out nice little trophies and cups. An interesting idea, which I'll come back to you later, but it wasn't until the 1904 St. Louis Olympics that St. Louis? St. Louis? St. Louis Olympics that we saw the introduction of the medal system that we recognize today. It was based on the three ages of man. Holy sh Greek mythology. It really was. The Golden Age, when men lived amongst the gods. The Silver Age, when the youth lasted for a hundred years. And the Bronze Age, which was the era of heroes, albeit third place heroes. The best kind. Some solid gold medals were handed out for the next three Olympic Games until the last one was draped around a winning neck in 1912. After the First World War broke out, gold was much harder to come by, and so alloys were introduced winter the winning medals to make up for the lack of the good stuff. And once you've done it cheaply, I'm gonna guess you're never going back. You're never going back. And no athlete ever won a solid gold medal ever again. Should just read these ahead of time, shouldn't I? These days, the medals are produced by the host city's organizing committee, but they have to abide by a few strict regulations imposed by the International Olympic Committee. Most notably, the gold medals must be made up of at least 92.5% silver and must be gilded with at least 6 grams of gold. That is so cheap. But why did they never go back to solid gold? After all, the First World War didn't last forever. It didn't? No, I mean, it didn't. Definitely didn't. I don't know why I questioned that. Well, the first thing to bear in mind is that those solid gold medals were surprisingly titchy. Today, the regulations say that a medal must have a diameter of 60 millimeters and a minimum thickness of 3 millimeters. That's very thin. Ha! Gay! The host city usually plumps for something bigger, with a diameter of 100 millimeters and a thickness of 10 millimeters. But the final solid gold medals handed out in 1912 had a diameter of 33 millimeters and were just 1.5 30 diameter. Oh, they're really small. It's like American years. What is that like? inch and a half, maybe? They might have been valuable, but they looked about as exciting as a penny coin. Another point to consider is the expansion of the events back in 1912. Stockholm only had to come up with gold medals for 102 events, whereas Tokyo this year had to come up with 339, which is a lot of gold. The main point is that it would just prove to be hideously overexpensive. When London hosted the 2012 Olympics, it's reported that they spent the equivalent of about $70,000 on the production of gold medals, which of course were just silver plated medals with six grams of gold. If you win a silver one just go to like a jeweler and be like can you plate that in gold please and they'll be like are you did, did you win that silver mate? you just said and they'd be like yeah 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 <laughs> yeah did i gotta tell my parents they probably weren't watching <laughs> be like yeah look mom and dad gold <laughs> if they'd gone for solid gold medals the estimated total cost would have been closer to two million dollars considering that the uk spent around 14 billion dollars on hosting the london olympics it could be argued that they were in a position to splash out on a bit more for the prize as the for the prize that on the prizes for the athletes who brought for the on the prizes for the athletes who bring the games to life. But cost isn't the only factor. Even with a bottomless bank account, it would actually be quite tricky to even source the amount of gold required for the Olympic gold Olympics every four years. Gold is obviously a finite resource. So far, we've dug up nearly 200,000 tons of it, and geologists reckon there's still there's only another 55 tons left in the Earth's crust. That's crazy. Is that is that true? Most of this 200,000 tons above ground is very much spoken for, and it's not yet. Yeah, it's not like people are just is lying around on the street for anyone to pick up. And it's not like the host city can just place a quick order online to get the required quantities. Really? If you've got $2 million, can't you buy $2 million worth of gold? Is that really so hard? 
I don't feel that'd be so hard. And gold is only going to get more and more expensive in the future as gold mining eventually grinds to a halt forever, having extracted every last, out, last ounce from the grounds and everyone fights over the stuff that we've dug up with the knowledge that no more fresh supplies are coming. There just won't be enough gold to go around and it's easy to see why the Olympics have given up on the idea and prefer to hand out a nice, big, shiny, cost-effective trinket instead. It's not to say that an Olympic gold medal is cheap tat. Silver is still not to be sniffed at. If you melted down a gold medal from the 2018 Pyong, Pyong, Pyeongchang no. Winter Olympics, it would be valued at about $577. A melted down silver medal, crafted from pure silver and with no gold gilding, would fetch $320. That is a good example of how much more expensive gold is than silver. Meanwhile, a bronze medal made from a bit of copper and tin would fetch the princely sum of around $3.50. Wow. I mean, that's really like disrespectful to the. I feel like they should put a little bit of gold just inside it just to be like, okay. It's worth at least $150 or something, just to not like maximum level cheap out. Seriously, those bronze medals are a bit embarrassing, aren't they? You might as well hand out a small brass penis and get the athletes to stick it on their forehead during the presentation ceremony. Ah, that sounds useful to have wanted it. Of course, if you did melt down an Olympic medal which had been worn by an athlete, you'd be absolutely a gibbering idiot because the value naturally skyrockets after the event. A gold medal awarded to track and field legend Jesse Owens at the 1936 Berlin Olympics sold for $1.4 million dollars at auction in 2013. Yeah, but Jesse Owens is also one of the most famous Olympic winners in ever. And it's not just the historically significant medals that command big bucks. Ukrainian boxer Vladimir Kichko won a gold medal at the 1996 Atlanta Olympics and decided in 2012 that he wanted to auction the symbol of his lifelong dream in order to raise money for a charity which helped fund children's sports camps and facilities. Sounds like a bit of a legend, doesn't he? The medal was acquired for a cool million dollars by a mystery buyer. In a quite heartwarming olive wreath twist, after donating the millions of dollars to charity, the mystery buyer returned the medal to Vladimir Kichko as he felt it still belonged to the man who'd sweated blood and tears to earn it. Double legends. Whoever, and double, triple legends for just remaining anonymous, doing something so epic and being like, nah, don't even want to be, t no, you don't even need to know who I am. Respect. I'll be like, it was me, it was me, praise me, I'm so glorious. That's because I'm a dick. That's, that's my thing. Unfortunately, some of the other gold medals have a tendency to fade over the passing of time. Dutch athlete Fer Fanny Blankers Cohen won no less than four gold medals at the 1948 Olympics, but she's had to get them all regilded at least twice over the years. So that's something to, she's been like rubbing her hands all over her or something. So that's something to bear in mind for all the gold medals at the 2020 Olympics, whose medals are entirely made up of bits of gold, silver, copper, and zinc, which has been stripped from 79,000 tons of old cell phones and electronics devices, kindly donated by the Japanese public. But it's a shame that the phrase "bringing home the gold." Is to be taken is not to be taken too literally and it does make you wonder why athletes are so obsessed with the idea of chasing gold medals which aren't even made of gold because it's just about the symbolism isn't it it's like you're best in the world at the olympics at this specific sport it's not about the actual gold you're winning because i'm sure there are easier ways to earn 577 dollars or even however much they were when it's fully gold. Maybe it's time to shake up the podium and hand out a few a more fitting and logical reward. I love the approach taken at the 1900 Paris Olympics where they handed out trophies and cups. The funny thing about the gold medals is that you don't even get your name engraved on the front like you would in most other sporting events. Instead, you just get a fancy picture of Nike, the Greek goddess of victory. Even I got my name engraved on the trophy for winning the 2004 pool championship down at the Dog and Bollock, although admittedly there are only five other players and one of them had a broken neck. Danny, I feel like this isn't a joke. I really feel this could be a genuine Danny story that he did win it and he remembers and he has the medal and he was playing against a dude with a broken neck. But a gold medal winning athlete can't really prove that the medal belongs to them. They could have just mugged another athlete down at the Olympic Village or bought a cheap replica on eBay. Let's give them a proper trophy with a personal engraving and forget about these nonsensical and misleadingly colored coins for the proper winners anyway. <laughs> Third places can make do with a fistful of Walmart gift vouchers and a toaster. At least that would be something of a long jump in a more lucrative direction for these poor souls. But a bomb bomb. This has been an episode of Business Plays. I do hope you enjoy it. If you'd like something else sort of similar to this, if you're like, oh, I've been enjoying this train of the wrecks, please click up there on the screen. And as always, thank you for watching. Hello Fresh, link below, by the way. How dare you!